So today, right now, we're heading to Fashion Island, uh, Newport Beach. It's a place that there's a watch repair shop there. I think it's called Fast Fix. Um, I purchased a watch, I want to say, in January on Amazon, and I purchased the Square Trade warranty, extended warranty with it. Well, this particular watch is an overseas market made in Japan, Seiko, um, and it's it stopped working. So I called up the Square Trade plan, and they told me I could bring it to any repair shop as long as it has, as long as they provide a uh, typed receipt. I pay for the repair, and then they reimburse me for it. So I'm bringing it in today. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what the repair comes to, and then I'll submit the repair costs once I pick back up the watch, turn it into the Square Trade plan, and see see if they actually pay to get it fixed. <laughs> This right here is that Seiko Sarb 017 Alpinist watch and I dropped it off at Fast Fix Jewelry and Watch Repair in Newport Beach where they gave me a receipt confirming that I dropped it off in their care. Yes I am doing a voice over here too because the price has actually gone up on the watch. I was explaining the price of the watch and the ordering process of the watch and how the warranty popped up on the screen. The watch has gone up from the 475 that it was shown as here in the video to 699.99 on amazon.com. So it kind of sort of makes this warranty even more worth it because replacing the watch would have been even more substantially expensive. Yeah, I was called on uh, Wednesday and told that my watch is ready for pickup and we'll see how it works and then we'll get the receipt and send it in to uh, the warranty claims and see if they pay it and how quickly they pay it. So I got the watch back. It's actually working again. They provided me with this receipt that says that they did a water pressure test and a time test and they say it passed. I'm gonna go home and put it up on the time grapher and I'm gonna submit this receipt to the warranty company and see how long it takes for them to pay out in the warranty. Okay, I'm back home with the watch. Um, it seems to be working good, it seems to be keeping time so far. Uh, but it's what I'm gonna do, I'm going to submit this receipt um, to Square Trade to see how long it takes to get paid and see how hard it is to do that and also I have this inexpensive little time grapher machine here um, that I'm gonna put the watch on and uh, see, I'm gonna let it run for a moment while I figure out how to submit the receipt and see how, how accurate it's running. So both of them are uploaded Submit receipt. Prepare receipt for $160 has been submitted. A specialist will review your submission with one business day to resubmit your receipts. Okay. So now we get to wait and see if it gets approved. And uh, they'll review it. It says once we've reviewed your repair documents, we'll send you a payment of the repair costs minus any approved deductibles. We process payments within one business day. So I'm assuming they're going to send that. This is, they're going to send it to my home address. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do over the next few days is check and record the accuracy and variations of it while wearing it until I receive the check, as wearing it on your wrist usually yields slightly different results than stationary in the time grapher. Yeah, as well as what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the watch right now and zero it you know like sync it to the time take a picture of it and then i'll check it tomorrow and then the next day and maybe i think to because today's friday i'll check it on monday um and see how much time it's lost over the course of a few days so how do you, how do i do that you might ask so i unscrew the crown 
Okay, and I wait for the second hand to come around to the top. Then once the second hand has reached the 12 o'clock position, I sync it with the time on my phone, and then I proceed to snap a picture of it, uh, which I get a perfect timestamp of when that picture was taken, and I do that once every give or take 24 hours, and I'm able to calculate truly how many seconds a day it's either gaining or losing while wearing it on the wrist. And that's, I think, a little bit more accurate than the time grapher machine. Okay, so here we are after eight days of having the watch back in my hands and um, having timed it pretty much every single day since I got it back. I have the numbers here. Obviously the first day we were plus or minus at zero seconds. The second day minus 13, the third day minus 16. The fourth day minus 11, the fifth day minus 15, the sixth day minus 12, the seventh day minus 11, and the eighth day minus 14. Um, that equates to over eight days, it lost 92 seconds. That's an average of 11 and a half seconds per day. That's 345 seconds a month at a loss of 345 seconds a month, or a total of uh, five minutes and 45 seconds that you lose over the course of a month. A watch like this, that's I think within Seiko specs for the movement. I could be wrong, it could be one way or the other. I think it's like plus 15, minus 30 a day. Um, so to average minus 11 and a half, I think whatever way you flip that, minus 11 and a half is within the specifications. Um, let me go over real quick. So I took the watch in, because uh, I want to review fast fix watch and repair, uh, or, or jewelry and watch repair. Um, I took it in on the 14th. Obviously we all know what's going on right now. There's businesses being closed, you know, malls being closed and fast fix jewelry and watch repair was in a mall. Um, but they don't do the actual watch repair on site. So they had to send it off to their, you know, watch repair factory, which I guess is in Los Angeles, as they said that there's too much dust in the storefront to be able to disassemble these. So I dropped it off on the 14th, July 14th in the afternoon. I got it back July 24th. It was actually done on the 22nd. It was actually done on the 22nd. They called me on the 22nd, but they were, but they're closed every other day during the week. So it took less than 10 days to get the watch to the repair shop and back to them, which I was quite happy with that, all things considered. Um, the total overall sequence of things, I ordered the watch on Amazon, it broke a few months later. I contacted Square Trade, and my first time ever interacting with Square Trade, I got a whole bunch of warranties with Square Trade. So after contacting Square Trade, they told me to contact Seiko because Seiko is a distributor or manufacturer here in the United States. I don't think they actually manufacture any of the watches here, but they do sell watches. Um, they said that the watch might still be under warranty. I contacted Seiko. Seiko said, hey, we didn't, you know, we aren't the original distributor of this watch, so it's not under our warranty. I contacted Square Trade. They understood and they went ahead and they moved it past that requirement to take it back to the manufacturer for their warranty. Um, and then, to my surprise, they were, they told me, you can bring it any place that you want to bring it, so long as they're, you know, an actual watch repair place, and they can provide you with a paper invoice, something that, you know, says, hey, this watch was repaired here, this was the actual cost and the breakdown of it. So, I got a hold of a dealer that I've gone to, we went, went to buy one of my other watches, and they deal in Rolex and Grand Seiko and stuff like that. They told me it would be difficult for them to get parts for a standard Seiko through normal channels. They advised me to use that fast fix watch and or jewelry and watch repair. It's in the same shopping center as them, called them, they were open um, and I dropped it off there. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with the quality of the repairs so far. Apparently their repairs also come with a one year warranty um, and their turnaround, like I said, was less than 10 days. Um, it seems to be running to spec. Uh, and oh, the day that I got the watch back, which was on the 24th of July, I submitted the receipt that night online. It was quick and easy, just clicked on the claim, was able to put the receipt in. Then on the 25th, which was a Saturday, I got an email from them that says that they received my receipt and they're gonna be sending reimbursement for the expenses I put out for this uh, shortly. Uh, they're gonna send it to my home address. So uh, it was, Thursday the 30th that I got the check and it's that's right here so I got the check Thursday the 30th and the full amount no deductibles nothing else out of my pocket and they even thanked me for using square trade I mean you know they 
they got they got enough of my money from other products that I've purchased with Square Trade. My first time using it, I have to be honest with you, I am quite happy with the outcome. Otherwise, this would have been $160 completely out of my pocket and or just said, screw it, I ain't gonna bother to get it fixed. I've got other watches, but I really, I really do, you know, have a bit of an appreciation for how beautiful this watch is. And overall, I'm happy, I'm happy with the quality of the repairs, happy with the customer service through Square Trade. And would I buy a warranty like this again through Amazon? Absolutely, with as easy as this was to get it fixed. And the fact that I could take it to whoever I wanted to take it to, unlike having to bring it to a low, you know, a, a watch repair place that might be 20 or 30 miles from my house, or a watch repair place that might be right down the street but poorly rated, I could actually look around for a repair shop, find one that was recommended by somebody, and take it there and ended up with a good result. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button, please hit that like button. It would really help out the channel. And if you have any questions, obviously, please leave them in the comment section. I'm more than happy to answer. Thanks for watching.